This video is for Vermeer Horizontal Directional Drills. You may have a Vermeer Horizontal Directional Drill with components that look different than those shown in this video. However, most drill operating functions are the same. When used properly, your Vermeer Horizontal Directional Drill will give you many hours of productive service. It is equipped with useful safety features to help protect you from serious injury. But safe work practices are also a necessary part of accident prevention. You must exercise caution and use good judgment. Your safety and the safety of other crew members depends on it. This video is not a substitute for a thorough and complete reading and understanding of the drill's operators and maintenance manuals, safety instructions, and safety signs on the drill. Before operating the drill, always read the operator's manual, view this video, know their content, and follow their instructions. As you view this video, stop and replay at any time to review information or consult the operator's manual. Viewing this video more than once and referring to your operator's manual will reinforce what you have learned. Allow only responsible, properly trained personnel to operate a horizontal directional drill. Become familiar with the controls, operation, and use of the machine under the supervision of a trained and experienced operator. Operator must be familiar with worksite safety rules and regulations and must be mentally and physically capable of operating the drill safely. Advise anyone who will operate it to read the operator's manual carefully and study this operation and safety video and the fundamentals of Horizontal Directional Drilling User's Guide. All crew members and operators of Vermeer Horizontal Directional Drill must understand processes and procedures used to locate underground utilities, job site safety, including safety barriers and protective clothing, as well as operating and emergency procedures, drill lockout procedure and remote lockout system, two-way radio communication, drill transportation, drill setup, drilling and back reaming, including selection and installation of tools. Consult your operator's manual for detailed information regarding required personal protective equipment. Required clothing includes electrically insulated safety boots, safety glasses, hearing protection, hard hat. If working near traffic, high visibility clothing may be required. Electrically insulated personal protective equipment helps protect the operator and crew if there is an electrical strike. Seated operators of Vermeer directional drills are required to wear electrically insulated safety boots, but are not required to wear electrically insulated gloves. Locating equipment operator and anyone else working on the ground around the machine and along the bore path must wear electrically insulated safety boots. Other crew members need to wear hearing protection, hard hat, safety glasses, and electrically insulated safety boots when working close to the drill and or support equipment. 
anyone standing on the ground and touching the drill while drilling must wear electrically insulated gloves and electrically insulated safety boots. This includes any personnel loading or unloading drill rods. The ground may become electrically charged if a strike occurs. When placing the voltage stake in the ground, wear both electrically insulated safety boots and electrically insulated gloves. Rollover is possible. Be alert and use extreme caution when operating on hillsides or near ditches, gullies, holes, or obstructions where rollover could occur. Death or serious injury can result if crushed under the drill. Never allow anyone to be on the downhill side of the drill. Before starting the machine, review the machine's maintenance manual's daily checks. Survey area around the drill for persons and obstacles before driving or moving the drill. Drive machine at a correct speed for the terrain. Some drills have a seated position for driving the drill. These machines have rollover protection and seat belts. It is important to always wear the seat belt when driving the machine. It will help protect you in a rollover by keeping you inside the protection of the rollover protective structure. Wearing the seat belt will also protect you from being thrown from the seat if the drill suddenly changes position on uneven ground. Some machines have joystick ground drive controls mounted on the rear of the drill. Ground drive controls do not function with an operator in the seat. Some drills use remote control. Stay uphill when operating or moving a drill. Maintain visual contact with the machine at all times. Riders can fall. Never allow riders on the drill. Follow drill shutdown procedure. Shut off drilling fluid pump. Reduce engine speed to idle. Wait one to five minutes to shut off engine when shutting down after operating at full power. See engine vendor manual for specifics. Shut off engine and remove key. See your operator's manual and engine manual supplied with the drill for complete information. If working on the drill rod or drill tools at a remote location away from the machine, Use the correct lockout procedure. Some of the steps to prepare the machine for transport are listed here. See your operator's manual for more information. Store cable and voltage stake in storage bracket on the drill. Ensure rod retainers are installed in rod box to prevent drill rods from falling out of rod box during trailering. Extend rod loader arms toward drill rack. Rotate operator console fully towards drill rack if applicable. Fold red transfer arm barriers in to prevent damage to the barrier. Before transporting the machine on a truck or trailer, read the truck or trailer manual for safety precautions and information. Properly attach the trailer to the towing vehicle and chalk wheels or set park brake of towing vehicle. Ensure drill's gross weight is within the trailer's and towing vehicle's gross weight limits. Load and unload drill with the trailer on a level surface and attached to a towing vehicle. 
see machine's maintenance manual for drill size and weight specifications. Unintended machine movement may occur when loading or unloading on slippery, dirty, or uneven trailer surfaces. Death or serious injury can result if struck or crushed by a machine. Ensure trailer is level and all loading surfaces are clean and free of debris. Do not attempt to load onto slippery trailer surfaces. Use smooth and controlled steering movements. Align center line of drill with center line of trailer to minimize steering while loading. Slowly drive drill squarely onto trailer. Stop drill when tie down position is reached. Tie down position distributes machine weight on the trailer as recommended by the trailer manufacturer. Lower rear stabilizer and drill rack frame. Follow operator's manual shutdown procedure. Use tie down points to secure the drill to the trailer with chains and binders. When unloading the machine from a trailer, be sure the trailer is on level ground and drive slowly off the ramps. Do not unload the machine if trailer surface is slippery, which could cause the machine to slide off the trailer. Vermeer horizontal directional drills are equipped with an operator presence system. Thrust and rotation will not function if thrust and rotation controls are activated when the operator is not in the seat. This system is intended for your safety and must be maintained in good functional condition. See your operator's manual for ground drive operator presence controls. Test remote lockout system according to operator's manual. Test range of radios and remote lockout transmitter along bore path. The remote lockout system is a communication and control tool that allows a worker along the bore path or at exit site to directly lock out drill rod rotation, thrust, pullback, integrated fluid flow controls. The remote lockout system will not shut down the power units on standalone drilling fluid systems or air compressors. These external power units must be shut off and locked out manually. Check current sensing coil and coil connectors for damage. Unwind voltage state cable. Ensure cable and connections are clean and undamaged. Damaged current sensing coil, connectors, or voltage state components could give incorrect information or no information. Wear electrically insulated gloves and other required PPE when inserting voltage stake. Insert stake into the ground at least 6 feet, or 1.8 meters, diagonally away from the drill and not over the drill string. Do not test with the stake in its storage cradle, lying on the drill, or lying on the ground. For the system to function correctly, the voltage stake must be fully inserted into soil through which voltage can pass to adequately relay voltage differential between the drill and earth ground. If the drill is on asphalt or concrete, the voltage stake must still be inserted into the ground. You may need to cut a small hole for the stake and moisten the soil around the stake. If the drill is on a dry hard surface, Moisten the ground under the tracks to help increase electrical conductivity between the machine and ground. Insert auger stakes into the ground.
All Vermeer directional drills have a strike alert system. See your horizontal directional drill operator's manual for strike alert control information. Press test key to test voltage and current sensing circuits. Alarm on drill unit must sound. If alarm does not sound when the test key is pressed, the system is not functioning. Call your Vermeer dealer. If the alarm sounds when the key is pressed, it means the system is working correctly. If testing the system after a suspected strike, it does not guarantee that a strike has not occurred. If you suspect an electrical strike, follow the procedures in electrical shock protection in your drills operator's manual. Press alarm cancel key after strike alert alarm sounds and the cause has been corrected. If the cancel key does not shut off alarm, do not move off the drill until cause has been identified. Use the remote lockout system to lock out the drill before working on or near drill rod. Although the system can stop these functions while drilling, the purpose is to prevent these functions from being started in the first place. Do not rely on the remote lockout system as an emergency stop. It is very unlikely that disabling thrust and rotation could be done quickly enough to prevent death or serious injury. Inspect job site for Notices of underground placements, manhole covers, drop boxes, recent trenching activity, evidence of possible underground placements. Examine work area for obstructions, conditions, or situations which may impair machine operation or create a safety hazard. Use information in your operator's manual and your own good judgment when identifying these hazards and implementing hazard prevention measures. Walk the bore path to double check for signs of utility lines, potential causes of locator interference, and general assessment. Look for the following visual signs that could indicate presence of utility lines. Ditch lines or depressions where the ground has settled from previous excavation. Buildings that have lights but no overhead wires. The power lines may be buried in the bore path. Patch repairs in the street which could indicate digging to bury or repair a utility line. Wires extending into the ground which might power traffic sensing loops or traffic lights. Manholes, which can be used for utility line connections and sewer connections. Water and gas shutoff valves, likely indicators of utility lines in the area. When utilities have been marked or there is evidence of unmarked utilities, one method of exposing utilities is vacuum excavation. Vacuum excavation is a means of soil extraction through vacuum using pressurized water or air for breaking ground. It is commonly accepted as being equivalent to or safer than hand digging within the tolerance zone around underground facilities. Carefully plan the bore before drilling. Refer to Fundamentals of Horizontal Directional Drilling User's Guide for more information on bore planning. Striking an electrical line can cause electrocution. Striking a gas line can cause an explosion. 
cutting a fiber optic cable could result in eye damage caused by laser light. Death or serious injury possible. Locate utilities before digging. Safety cones are important to guard personnel from possible electric shock. Position cones with safety signs facing outward to warn approaching spectators or other workers to stay away since the area could become electrically charged. Four safety cones are provided. Cones should be placed approximately 6 feet, or 1.8 meters, diagonally from each corner of the machine. Drilling fluids play a number of key roles that may be overlooked by inexperienced persons. Drilling fluid increases drilling efficiency by cooling the drill head, flowing cuttings out of the hole, reducing reactivity of certain clay formations, creating slurry, stabilizing the bore path, increasing lubrication in sticky soil, cleaning off buildup, providing hydraulic power to downhole mud motors, Drilling fluid mixing systems mix drilling fluid additives with water, then supply that mixture to the drill. Most mixing systems supply drilling fluid to an onboard high pressure pump on the drill itself. A good flow of high quality drilling fluid from the drilling fluid system is essential to the HDD process, not only for the life of the onboard drilling fluid pump, but also to help ensure successful bores. Contact your local Vermeer dealer for more drilling fluid and drilling fluid system information. Do not work in a trench with unstable sides which could cave in. Specific requirements for shoring or sloping trench walls are available from several sources, including federal, state and local governmental safety offices, such as OSHA in the United States. Be sure to contact suitable authorities in your area for these requirements before working in the trench. Before starting the drill, read the operator's manual. Different model drills may have different starting requirements. If your machine is equipped with maintained position toggle type switches for vices, pressing the hydraulic enable switch will result in vice movement if the vice switch position was changed while the engine was off. Crushing injury may result. Keep everyone clear of the vice area when starting the drill or enabling hydraulics. When shutting off a drill, follow the operator's manual shutdown procedure. These are some of the steps you'll follow. Turn drilling fluid pump off. Decrease engine speed to idle. Wait one to five minutes to shut off engine when shutting down after operating at full power. See engine vendor manual for specifics. Shut off engine and remove key. For your safety and the safety of others, use the shutdown procedure before servicing, cleaning, unplugging, or inspecting the machine. If working on the drill string or drill tools at a remote location, use correct lockout procedure. Test the strike alert system on the drill unit. The strike alert system is designed to sound an alarm if contact is made with an electrical source so that appropriate action can be taken. It does not warn you before making a strike. 
Do not operate the machine unless the strike alert system is fully operational. Follow your operator's manual for complete test and setup instructions. When operating the machine, remain seated with your feet on the platform at all times while boring. Electrical shock can kill. If strike occurs, do not step down. Keep all workers and spectators away from the machine. Contact with the drill unit while standing on the ground may result in death or serious injury from electrical shock if anchor stakes make contact with underground electric power. Drive anchor stakes only while seated at controls with both feet on platform. Keep everyone away from the drill when anchor stakes are being inserted into the ground. Vermeer horizontal directional drills are equipped with a radio-controlled remote lockout system. When activated, the lockout command prevents drill stem rotation and thrust and drilling fluid flow. The remote lockout system will not shut down the power units on standalone drilling fluid systems or air compressors. These external power units must be shut off and locked out manually. Turn on the handheld remote lockout transmitter and test the run and lockout functions. Pressing the green run button and holding for two seconds will transfer drilling function controls to the drill operator and transmit a command to place the drill into run mode. Confirmation that the drill is in run mode is indicated by the green lamp on steady and the audible alarm sounding for two seconds. To lock out the machine, press and release the red lockout button to transmit a lockout command to the drill. The green run lamp will change from steady to a flashing mode until the drill sends a confirmation signal that the drill has successfully been locked out. When the machine has confirmed successful lockout, the flashing green lamp goes off and the red lockout lamp turns on steady. An audible indication of three short beeps, repeated three times, will sound when the lockout has been successful. If lockout is unsuccessful, the red lamp will not come on. The audible horn will sound continuously for 60 seconds, and the handheld transmitter will vibrate. Test remote lockout for proper function before operating the machine. This test procedure is explained in the instructions provided in the operator's manual. Proper communication is essential to prevent unplanned startup of the drill string and or tool. Death or serious injury could result. Always use the following communication requirements. Use good quality two-way radios with sufficient range to provide clearly understood communication. Test radios at the site to ensure communication can be heard above background noise. To help avoid confusion, the radio at the exit location must be assigned to one person. This is the designated person who must always communicate with the drill operator. When sending a message, even when locating the head, identify yourself and the receiver by name. This helps prevent confusion if more than one drill is operating on a job site. See Operator's Manual and elsewhere in this video for more locating information. Received messages must always be confirmed as correct by repeating the message back to the sender. The sender must always require confirmation that the message was received and sent.
When selecting tools for your drill, only use tools and accessories which are approved by Vermeer Corporation. Larger machine models and dual rod models use tooling which couples directly to the drill string without a starter rod. All other current drills are manufactured with optional hex collar connections. Hex collar connection systems do not require pipe wrenches or a powered breakout device to change tools. This eliminates the potential hazard of being struck by the wrench if unexpected drill string rotation occurs. Do not substitute other kinds of connection systems unless operating a mud motor. For best performance, you may need to directly couple the mud motor to the drill string. When attaching a direct coupled or hex collar drill head assembly to your machine, do not hold the tool and use the rotation of the machine to connect the drill head assembly. Follow machine shutdown procedure and then spin the tool onto the drill stem by hand or place into front vise depending on machine model and type of drill head. Hex collar connections must then be secured using the hex collar. Wrench on rotating drill string can strike you. Death or serious injury will result. Always use the power vise to make or break joints at the machine. Death or serious injury will occur if drill stem rotation starts and you are struck by the wrench. If a wrench is attached to the drill stem, it can rotate quickly and with great force. If the wrench strikes you, death or serious injury will occur. While drilling or back reaming, it is very important to stay away from any exposed drill stem or drilling tools. Entanglement in the rotating drill stem and cutting tool will result in death or serious injury. This can happen very quickly, and you will not be able to free yourself once you are caught. Do not wear loose clothing, which is more likely to catch on rotating equipment. When the pilot bore is complete, there are some essential safety precautions to follow when changing tooling and pulling in product. Rotating drill rod can kill. Unexpected startup is possible. Always lock out the machine before working on or near exposed drill rod. It is essential the machine is locked out before approaching the drill head. Changing tools. Adding a product. Applying wrench or other tool to drill string. Adding or removing drill stem doing any other work on the drill stem or tools at the exit end of the pilot bore, or entering an exit pit. When using the portable lockout system, communicate to the operator you intend to lock out the machine. Tell machine operator to reduce engine speed to idle. Press red lockout button on remote transmitter. Wait for signals to sound and red lockout light to come on, indicating lockout is successful. If confirmation is not received that lockout was successful, you must assume that drill stem function is not locked out. If conditions exist that prevent the remote lockout transmitter from establishing communication with the drilling machine, you must lock out the machine by using two-way voice radios to communicate a stop command to the machine operator and requiring confirmation of the message. Shut off machine. Remove ignition key and deliver key to the exit location where work will be done on the drill string or cutting tools. The key must remain in this location until startup is permitted. Never use machine drill stem rotation to change tooling or add drill stem. 
Entanglement in a rotating drill stem or cutting tool will result in death or serious injury. After the machine has been locked out, the drill head may be removed and a reamer attached. Hex collar connections do not require the use of pipe wrenches or tongs. Never replace hex collar tooling with unauthorized tooling which requires the use of pipe wrenches or tongs. When using a hex collar connection, slide back the hex collar and spin off the drill head by hand. If your tooling is equipped with a direct coupled connection, such as when using a mud motor, a portable breakout device will be required to loosen the joint between the drill stem and the tooling. It is recommended that you use a Vermeer breakout system available from your Vermeer dealer. Vermeer Portable Breakout Device eliminates the use of pipe wrenches or tongs. Its compact length reduces the chance of being struck if the drill stem rotates unexpectedly. Before attaching a reamer, check to make sure the swivel is functioning properly. The swivel must be properly lubricated and must turn freely by hand. Death or serious injury could occur if you are struck by whipping rod or product. Never use a shackle when attaching swivel to back reamer. Shackle will not keep the swivel aligned with the reamer and may result in whip and rotation of trailing drill rod or product. Entanglement in rotating drill rod can result in death or serious injury. Rotating trailed rod could whip and strike you. A properly functioning swivel is necessary to prevent the trailing drill rod or product being pulled in from turning. When checking that the swivel turns freely, it may be necessary to use a tool to loosen the swivel if the swivel has not been used for some time. But afterward, you must be able to turn it by hand. If you cannot turn it by hand, or if the trailing drill stem or product attached to the swivel rotates along with the reamer, the swivel must be repaired or replaced. When attaching a reamer that spins onto the drill string, make sure the threads are cleaned and lubricated. Then spin on the reamer and swivel by hand and slide on the hex collar. If your machine uses direct coupled tooling, lock out the machine and use pipe wrenches to tighten the reamer. See machine's operator's manual for correct torque. When attaching a heavy reamer, it is recommended that you use a Vermeer reamer carrier such as this one. It provides a convenient way to lift and position the reamer for attachment to the drill string. In addition, it makes it easier to spin on the hex collar or direct couple tooling by hand. When pre-reaming, drill stem is often trailed in behind a smaller reamer before a larger reamer and the final product is pulled in. When adding drill stem, one method is to assemble as many drill stem on the ground as practical before you attach them to the reamer. Using a portable breakout device or pipe wrenches, tighten each joint to the torque value listed in your machine's operator's manual. Do this before attaching the drill string to the reamer. The next step is to attach a rod recycler adapter to the first rod. Then install a reamer with a properly functioning swivel to the rod recycler adapter. 
If using a reamer without a built-in swivel, attach a swivel between the reamer and the rod recycler adapter. With the machine locked out, attach the trailing drill string to the reamer. Some external swivels can be incorrectly aligned with the reamer. If the swivel is not straight in line with the reamer, it might not swivel as intended. Instead, it could turn like a crank, causing the product to turn and whip. Do not use this kind of swivel. Instead, use a swivel with limited articulation. This will keep the swivel in line with the drill string. When pulling in the trailing drill stem, it may be necessary to stop the pullback process and add additional trailing drill stem. Make sure the machine is locked out and attach the drill stem using a portable breakout device or pipe wrenches. Pipe wrenches may be used in this instance provided that the machine is locked out and a properly functioning swivel is installed. An alternate method of setting up for pre-reaming using trailing drill stem is to stop rotation when the pilot bore exits the ground. Position the drill bit to the 12 o'clock position so the bit will slide on the surface when being pushed. Then, without rotating the drill stem, continue thrusting while adding additional stem at the machine until the desired length of drill stem extends past the exit point. This allows you to use the power vise on the directional drill to tighten all the drill stem joints at the machine instead of using pipe wrenches at the exit end of the bore. It also reduces time spent handling drill stem. When you have determined where the reamer will be installed in the drill string, position or support the trailing drill stem to remove bending stress at the joint where the drill string will be separated. Then lock out the machine and use a portable breakout device to loosen the joint. When the joint has been loosened, remove the portable breakout system and make sure there are no tools attached to the drill stem. Make sure everyone is clear of the entire drill stem. Then, use the drilling machine to slowly rotate in reverse until the joint is completely separated. Then, without rotating, slowly pull back the drill string until enough separation is available to insert the reamer and swivel. As with the previous method, lock out the machine and install the reamer, swivel, rod recycler, and trailing drill stem. You are now ready to start pulling back. Clear all workers from the area and communicate to the machine operator that you are ready for the pullback to begin. After the machine operator confirms the message, press and hold the run button for two seconds to enable drilling. If the machine was locked out by delivering the ignition key to the exit side, clear all workers from the drill string and return the key to the machine operator. The operator must request permission to resume operation and require confirmation of the message before resuming operation. Anytime you add additional drill stem, you must use this stop and restart procedure using the remote lockout system or delivering the key to the exit side. Repeat this sequence as many times as necessary until the reamer arrives at the machine. Remember, an exposed reamer at the exit side can quickly crawl sideways if rotation is started while it is laying on top of the ground, away from the exit hole or pit. 
Entanglement in the rotating drill stem and cutting tool will result in death or serious injury. Pull reamer up to the exit hole before rotating. When the reamer is at the exit hole, pullback with rotation can begin. Confirm everyone is away from exit pit, drill string, and cutting tools, and that no wrenches or tongs are attached to the drill string or cutting tools. When all pre-reaming is done, make sure the machine is locked out and attach the final product puller to the swivel. Make sure the swivel turns freely as before. Stay clear of product as it is being pulled into the bore. When the job is complete and it's time to remove the machine from the job site, make sure the site is properly cleaned up and free of hazards. High pressure water can penetrate skin. Serious injury possible. Fluid injected under the skin must be removed immediately by a surgeon familiar with this type of injury. Keep nozzles away from body. After each bore, clean and store drill rods, flush drilling fluid from drilling fluid system, wash machine, fold rod transfer arm barriers, and ensure rod retainers are installed in rod box to prevent drill rods from falling out of rod box during trailering. For more information, see your operator's manual and the Preparing for Transport section elsewhere in this video. Planning is one of the most important elements of a successful bore. The planned bore path should have the fewest bends possible. This helps prolong drill rod life and minimizes pullback issues. Consult the Vermeer Fundamentals of Horizontal Directional Drilling User's Guide for more information. Machine Setback positions the machine back far enough from the entry point that the maximum bore depth can be obtained without overbending the drill string or product being installed. The distance between the leading edge of the machine and the point where drill rod enters the ground should be as short as possible. Once overbent, rod may be permanently fatigued, risking downhole rod failure. If a sharp turn is created in the bore path by oversteering, every drill rod that passes through this sharp turn will be stressed as well. It is important to plan for adequate clearance of utilities and underground obstacles. Maintain clearances specified by regulatory authorities. The minimum clearance must take into consideration the final reamed diameter and bend radius of the pilot bore. Possible migration of the back reamer from the pilot bore toward the utility due to excessive steering or a tight radius must also be carefully considered when establishing clearances. Reamers are often used when pulling back product. One function of a back reamer is to enlarge the bore hole to a size large enough to allow for the installation of the required product. The second objective of the reamer is to mix the cuttings from the back reamer with the drilling fluid to create a slurry that can be displaced to the side of or discharged out of the bore path to allow room for the product. See the Fundamentals of Horizontal Directional Drilling User's Guide for more information. J. 
Generally, when pulling in smaller diameter product, the size of the reamer should be approximately 1.5 times the outside diameter of the product. On rods that are 10 inches, 25.4 centimeters, or larger, a reamer 1.3 times the size of the rod is usually sufficient. The general idea is to have a bore volume that is approximately 50% greater than the volume of the product. Some Vermeer directional drills are equipped with a crane. Required knowledge and abilities are Knowledge of all relevant safety codes and governmental regulations pertaining to the operation of this equipment. Familiarity with the equipment and all control functions. Reading and understanding operation instructions. See your Vermeer Horizontal Directional Drill Operator's Manual and Crane Operator's Manual for more information. Never allow machine or crane near or in contact with energized overhead power lines. Electric shock can kill. Crane in contact with or near overhead power lines will result in the machine becoming electrically charged. Stay away if crane is near overhead power lines. Never raise crane near energized overhead power lines. If voltage of power lines or apparatus is not known to the crane operator, then that person must contact electrical utility for that information and use that information in the setup of the lift. Assume all overhead lines are energized unless and until the owner of those lines or the electrical utility authorities verify that the lines are de-energized. Always use hooks equipped with a latch unless impractical, or if this poses a danger in your particular application. Latches help retain such items as slings and chains under slack conditions. Before operating the crane, perform a pre-operating inspection. Some things to look for are hydraulic leaks and mechanical issues. Verify hook has a safety catch. Look for twists, cracks, or damage. Check for wear or damage to slings and lifting accessories. Read and understand all safety signs before operating the crane. Safety operations include Do not position a load over a person. No one is permitted under a load. When lifting a load, keep it as close to the ground as possible. Most lift operations can be done without much height. Stop all crane operation at a signal from anyone. In the United States, OSHA requires the estimated location of underground utilities be confirmed before beginning excavation or an underground boring operation. It is the contractor's responsibility to expose each utility near the bore path. This is the only reliable method for determining exactly where the existing utility is located. Exposure pits must fully expose the utility line. One call services will mark the path of an existing line but will not verify how deep a line is. That's the responsibility of the directional drilling contractor. Be sure to contact the local utility locators as required in the job's location. There are different types and brands of locating receivers, transmitters, and displays on the market. Contact your local Vermeer dealership for more information. 
The ability to locate the drill head is necessary for the success of any bore. Failure to use proper locating techniques can result in the drill head becoming lost, coming out in the wrong location, or missing the intended target altogether. Proper locating techniques also help ensure utility avoidance. Be sure to keep all unauthorized persons away. If ground surface becomes electrically charged, death or serious injury could occur. Locator operator and drill operator should walk the planned drill path together. Turn the tracking receiver on, but leave the transmitter off. Look for signal strength variations or other unusual readings and mark these locations. Look for indications of older excavations such as depressions in the ground, pedestals, drops, outlets, etc. The most commonly used locators are walkover systems. Walkover systems consist of two major components, a receiver and a transmitter. The transmitter fits inside the drill head and sends out a signal that is picked up by the receiver. Walkover systems, as the name implies, require that the locator operator hold the receiver while walking over the top of the drill head to determine drill head depth and position. When walking on a bore path, never kneel on the ground. Your knees are unprotected and an electrical strike could cause death or serious injury. Locator operator must wear electrically insulated boots, safety glasses, hearing protection, hard hat, and high visibility clothing when working near or on roadways. Locators receive a signal from a battery powered transmitter installed inside the drill head. It is critical to read the operator's manual for each type of locator you use and to thoroughly understand the proper operation of that system. Some machines use wire line tracking. Please see your operator's manual or contact your Vermeer dealer for more information. There are two types of interference to consider when using a locating receiver, active and passive. Active interference can be caused by anything that emits a signal or generates its own magnetic field. These include buried power lines, traffic light power loops, airports, invisible dog fences, and others. Active interference can cause erratic signal strength and depth readings, loss of pitch and roll data, inaccurate receiver calibration leading to depth errors, An example of passive interference is rebar in concrete, which can distort the signal coming from the transmitter, making it difficult for the receiver to read the signal correctly. Other examples are metal fences, vehicles parked nearby, and salt water. Possible effects of passive interference include depths may appear greater than they actually are, all information may be blocked, drill head position may be incorrect. Although salt water doesn't actually create interference, salt water absorbs the signal and weakens it. This causes the receiver to think the drill head is deeper than it actually is. A maintenance manual is provided with the machine. It provides important maintenance information which must be followed for efficient operation and to help extend machine life. If you know or suspect something is wrong with the machine, stop using the machine and contact your local Vermeer dealer. 
Do not take chances with your safety by continuing to use a machine that needs maintenance or repair. This is the end of the video on operation and safety procedures for Vermeer Horizontal Directional Drill. Safe work practices when working with directional drilling machines are an important part of accident prevention. Do your part in following these procedures for your safety and that of your fellow workers. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, contact your Vermeer dealer or a certified Vermeer Horizontal Directional Drill Specialist.